Hey guys, so welcome back to another video. So today we are continuing the Tinkle Double Double Digest number 6. So we will continue from this story, Melting Point. So this is the first story of today. So yeah, so let's start. Supandi, get me a kilo of sugar from the market. Yes sir, one kilo of sugar please. There. Oh, oh it's, ta it's starting to rain. Hey Supandi, don't you have an umbrella? That sugar will melt if you if it gets wet. It will? Can you lend me an umbr your umbrella, Ramu? I don't have one right now. No way. Need mine. Why don't you run home and get yours? I'll do that, say, uh, I'll do that, say, G. Please keep this packet with you. I'll go fetch my umbrella. So, yeah. So, Supandi ran, ran into the house, took the umbrella. So, everybody is thinking, why is he running with the umbrella instead of using it? Hey, Supandi, why don't you open that umbrella so that you don't get wet? This is for the sugar, Ramu. It won't, I won't melt if I get wet. So, yeah, that was a funny story. So, that was story one. Now, we are starting with the story two. Second story of the day. Return journey. Once a bus was on a long distance journey. Two boys were traveling on it. Driver, has Baroda come? No. Later, hasn't Baroda come yet? Just relax. Will you? I told you I'd let me I'd let you know. I wonder if this town is Baroda. Much later. Oh no, what? Children, I'm sorry, but I forgot to tell you we have left Baroda far behind. But you promised. Listen, what's the matter? When when the other passengers heard of this you must drive back to Baroda, but it's 60 kilometers away, away. We don't care even if it's a hundred. You must drive these children there. All right, all right. So, well, here's Baroda. Can get down now. We don't want to get down. Our mother told us to eat our lunch when Baroda came. So the driver's like, oh no. So that was also a comedy. So let's go to the third story of the day, the donkey seller. Long ago in China, there lived a prosperous trader named Chow. He carried on his tra uh, he carried on his trading activities in many lands. One day, disaster struck. Oh, what shall I do? This colic has killed all my horses. I shall be ruined. So, you know, colic means a disease to which horses are particularly prone. So, yeah. Well, it's not good mopping about. I shall go, uh, go down to Che Su's inn for a tea. Perhaps that will cheer me up. So, he went to the inn. Soon, refreshments were served to him. Ah, excellent. At, at the nearby table, here you, you must have heard the stable, the third eye. Well, I am meeting the lady who runs it today. I want to buy a couple of donkeys. Yes, I have heard that. Her donkeys are cheap and very sturdy. So, that was an interesting piece of information. I will see the owner of the stable right away. Donkeys are cheaper than horses and can do much more work. I think I'd I'd uh, do well to buy a few of these animals. Good evening. My name is Chow. I've heard a lot about your donkeys and I'd like to buy some. Well, the donkeys are in the barn over there. You may go and look them over if you like. Then we'll fix up the price. These are excellent. 
But wait, I hear voices. It's the two men from I from the inn. Look, you look tired. Please come in. I'll serve you some soup. Thank you. I think I'll take a look. There she is. She is putting something in uh, in two of the bowls. Please begin. She served the soup to those two men. Ah, good. Soon. Ah, uh, they turning into donkeys. So that's how she does it. So. Come on, you! I'll sneak back into the barn. Ah, young man. Did you, did you like the donkeys? Come back to the house. I've made you some soup. I'll have some too. Thank you very much. Here's your soup. Thank you. But could I have a glass of water first? Of course. I'll switch the bowls. This is good. I'm glad you like it. Here's the water. So they drank the soup. Help you drink me. I'll get you. You're better looking donkey than the others. Come. I said other donkeys free. I can't turn you back into men, but at least you're free. Years later, Chow became very. Very a uh, big merchant and bought many horses, but he made the donkey work the hardest. So yeah, that was the story. That was the third story. So let's go to the last last story. Shikari Shambu. We've been walking for nearly three hours now. These brats don't seem to tire at all. Uncle, are you tired? Halt! It's time for you boys. Took some rest. Ah, but we love long hikes, Uncle. It looks like a good spot for a halt for the night. I hope there are no wild beasts around. Don't be scared, Sony. Shikari Shambu is with you. When the night everybody was sleeping, any wild animals around? The boys depend upon me for protection. I must remain alert. Oi! I am on guard duty, Uncle. Can I join you? Oh, of course. Can I play something on my tape recorder? Oh yes, I love music. What kind of music is that? This is the tape of the sound of wild animals. Roar, dum, roar. Someone is attracted by this. Ah, oh, it's been a long time since I hunted a tiger. Roar. Help, tiger! So, Shikari Shambu also freaked out. Shikari Shambu had done it again. He threw the tape recorder onto the tiger's face, and then he put the gun on top of the tiger's head. Shikari Shambu has done it again. A tiger. Your tape recorder came in hand. Came in rather handy, my boy. Wow. So that's the story of Shikari Shambu. So I'll see you in the next part of Tinkle Double Double Digest Number Six. See you in the next video. Bye.